Hey guys, in today's video we're going to talk about how to pour a DIY or a beginner's concrete walkway. Or a sidewalk, whatever you guys call it. We, we typically call it a walkway up here. So what we got is we got about a four foot wide walkway. Uh, part of it's straight, part of it's curved, and to begin, you know, we just dug out some of the existing soil there. You can see this is a new construction site. Dug out some of the existing soil, put in about six inches of gravel, and then formed it up. We used two by eights for forms here, and then we used also one by eight AZAC trim boards. They're PVC boards because they so they bend really good. Um, so they're eight inches and then we put two inches of styrofoam in here we live in Maine so we get a lot of freeze and thaw cycles and the styrofoam helps insulate the ground to prevent the, the frost from getting under the slab here and heaving it and cracking it so we typically put a lot of two inch styrofoam under exterior pores here in Maine and then you can see we tied a matter rebar in it that's number four rebar half inch and put some bricks under it to hold it up so, you know, if, if there's ever going to be a beginner's type of walkway or a DIY type of walkway, I guess this would be it. Something four feet wide, something you can, something you can ride the screed board right off the top of the forms. Um, the only thing that might be a little easier if there was no curve to it, if it was just straight. But even with a curve, if you're using those AZAC forms, it's, it's pretty easy to curve something with those. And then, you know, we have these metal pins we use. Those are about 24 inches long you drive those metal pins down they hold really well they got holes through them so you can screw right through them or you could use nails we like to use screws um, and then that holds everything in place you know you can use a four foot level to set your level you can use a laser level to set your level it has a slight slope away from the building from one side to the other it's got about a half to three quarters of an inch slope and it's it's going to butt up into the driveway here right at the bottom of the video so pretty easy diy walkway i think um some questions i get a lot about walkways are you know how thick should a concrete slab be for a walkway well this one this one's about five and a half to six inches thick so that's it's a little bit on the heavier side nothing wrong with that you could go four inches with a good sub base, with a good gravel sub base, especially if you're not in a freeze and thaw area. Four inches would be plenty enough for uh, any type of sidewalk or walkway. Um, if you get up in the north like we are, then maybe you want to go a little bit heavier. But pretty much four to six inches is plenty for uh, a DIY sidewalk. And another question, do you need gravel under a walkway? Well, so you need some type of soil that's not going to hold moisture. So if it does freeze, you know, then it's going to expand and heave. So a good gravel road base, uh, crushed rock, even even uh, crushed concrete aggregate, something like that underneath the sidewalk is going to be what you want. You don't typically want just sand under there. That's that's really not a strong sub base. It, I mean, it can pack pretty good when it's wet, but when it's dry, it tends to tends to be a little soft. So some type of gravel or road base is the best thing to put underneath the sidewalk. Another question is, you see a lot, or I hear a lot, is, you know, is three inches enough for a walkway or a sidewalk? Well, I mean, three inches is definitely going to be enough for somebody to walk on. It's going to be strong enough, but it all depends, you know, what's under it. I wouldn't recommend three inches. We, we never do them three inches. Four inches is the minimum we do. And then five to six like this one uh, is, is pretty normal for up here in Maine. Or anywhere in the northeast, I guess. So I would say no, three inches isn't enough. <laughs> it will hold your weight, but in the long term, it's probably not going to hold up like you'd want it to. Another thing is, uh, what do you put under a concrete walkway? Well, we just talked about that. Gravel, road base, crush rock, or, you know, um, basically those three things. Crushed concrete aggregate is another one if you can find it. Now, no, now can you pour your own concrete walkway? Well, if you're going to watch a video like this and watch us how we do it, I guess that's for you to decide. Do you think you can tackle something like this? 
Um, if you're a little unsure, I have I do have more training in the Concrete Underground where I have all my training videos, and that's in a link down below if you want to really learn how to pour concrete like we do and how we finish it. Now you're going to get to watch us pour it here. So we, you know, we obviously we we dump it out of the chute, we rake it around with the concrete rakes, try to get it as even with the top of the forms as we can. You're going to get to see us screed it and bull float it. Um, it is it is quite a bit of work. Um, if you do it every day like we do, we don't consider this very hard. Actually, it's on a scale of one to ten, with with one being easy and ten being hard. I'd say for us, this is probably about a two. <laughs> Um, but if you've never done it, you know, you might consider it an 8, 9, or 10 even. So it all kind of depends on how handy you are, if you, how physical you are, and stuff like that, is if you can do it on your own or not. And then, you know, what kind of experience do you have? If you've got absolutely no experience, I don't know, you're going to want to do some research because you only really got one chance to do concrete right. Because <laughs> once it gets hard, if you don't like it, you got to bust it out and do it over again. You can't. You can't really uh, fix this concrete very easily so again if you need help just I'll have my link down in the description for you but you can check that out um, if you have any questions you know leave your questions down in the comments I'll try to answer them the best I can if you're thinking of doing some type of walkway I'm gonna show you this is part one part two I'll show you the type of finish we're doing but there's all kinds of finishes you can put on a walkway like this you know, probably the easiest to do is just a simple broom finish. Cut some grooves in it, some joints in it with a joiner. Put your edger on it. And then, a, you know, a light broom finish. But there is a little bit of a trick to getting a really nice looking broom finish on these. You can do a stamp concrete finish. So you could, you, this, you could color the concrete, stamp it. As you can see in the background there, right, uh, that's me on the left mag floating the edge, but right in behind me those rubber mats is a stamp so that's really going to be part two of this you're going to see what kind of stamp we're going to do to this and how we stamp it and see if that's something you might want to tackle or you might not want to tackle on your own um, I guess you could put like a mag swirl finish on it or even a broom swirl finish there's there's different types of textures you can put on it you could stain it afterwards to get some color to it um, but those those are basically the types of finishes we normally do to walkways. Probably the most, the one we do the most is just like a light broom finish with when we cut some joints in it. And then the one we, the second most popular one we do is some type of stamp, you know, an ashlar slate, uh, cobblestone, or a random rock type of pattern, field stone pattern. Those are probably three of the most popular type of stamps we do. But you can see how Luke and Darren are just grabbing onto the screed right now. We got one long enough to overhang each edge so they don't have to get in the concrete while they're screeding. And we just we just run it across the top of the forms and I'm kind of raking down any high. We'd rather rake back a little bit of high like this and so it kind of fills in any low spots than have to go back and shovel stuff back in because the concrete's low. You'll see when I get the bow float in here shortly why why that's kind of important. Now Luke's changing screeds now, going back to a little bit shorter one. So because the gravel on the outside's kind of high there, and that screed was hitting that gravel, so that's probably a I don't know four foot eight screed. Those are magnesium screeds too. You could really if if you were just doing this one on your own. You don't have to go out and buy a screed like that. You can just use a 2x4, a straight 2x4. Will work plenty good enough for a screed. And then I guess, you know, if you didn't have the rakes, if this was just a one-time deal for you, you could probably just get away with shovels for that one deal. Um, we definitely like these rakes for concrete. But the bull float, you're probably going to want to have a bull float to get it nice and smooth. And then those mag floats, you see that thing hanging in our back pockets. The sh really small one is a what we call a margin trial and that's inside of a leather like a leather type holder for the margin trial and then we hang our mag floats those are magnesium floats too on top of that so we can just always have access to it and I guess you could probably mag float this whole thing after you get done screeding it without the bull float if you want to it's just a little faster with the bull float I think 
for some of you guys, if it, if this is a if you're trying to do this on your own, you could rent some of this stuff too. You can see we got a little bit high in there, but a couple shovelfuls we'll have to shovel out. And you can see how they're pulling that back just a little bit at a time. That way, um, it gets the let the surface nice and level, even though it slopes away from the building a little bit. Gets the surface nice and level. No humps, no dips in there. And then you can see me in the background. I'm starting to run the bull float over it now. So when I bull float over it, it makes bull float really easy. There's nothing I have to fill in afterwards. I can just run that over it two or three times. Kind of pushes the aggregate down a little bit below the surface. Brings up some of that paste, what we call a paste. And it fills everything in really nice and smooth. And that's what's going to make, or it's going to help the finishing process make finishing a lot easier especially if you're stamping a little trick to that bow float you know as you push it out you got to make sure that front edge is tipped up so it doesn't dig in and then when you go to pull it back you got to do just the opposite so the back doesn't dig in As I'm doing that, Darren and Luke are kind of finishing up that one little section. I can't remember how long this was. I think it was around 30, probably around 30 feet long or so like that, 35 feet. And then right there where Darren's standing, right where his left boot is, is, is the very end of it. That's where his driveway will end up starting down the road. So again, if you think you're going to do or try a DIY uh, concrete walkway or concrete sidewalk, you know, let me know down in the comments if you if you think you can tackle something like this. Uh, if you need help tackling something like this, let me know down in the comments. I'll leave a I'll pin a link for the concrete underground too in the comments. You can check that out. That would be a big help for you, I think. Um, there's all kinds of training videos in there, especially about finishing the concrete too timing when to finish you know it's there's a little trick to everything so again thanks for watching guys come on back and we'll see you on the next one